Hi there, it's uh, James and Ben with a new video. And this on this video, we're just going to do um, our top five favorite shows. So I'm going to give you my top five shows, and then Ben, you're going to give um, your top five shows. Is that correct? That's right. And then I'm going to interrogate you. <laughs> you're going to interrogate my uh, my poor poor taste. Yes, that's right. That's all right. That's all right. Okay. So um, my first top, uh, my first show in my top five, and it's kind of a bit of a cliche to be honest, Ben. Is um, Game of Thrones now? I know, I know, it's ridiculous. They're not all as cliche as Game of Thrones. I know everyone loves Game of Thrones, and there's hardly anybody that dislikes Game of Thrones. But in this world of, I can hear Merlot the dog moving around, so we might get a, an appearance by him in this video. In this world of like where everything, and I know we've spoken offline about it. Every show seems to be so well written and so well produced, and yeah. The production values, everything just seemed to be amazing on every show on TV or on a streaming service these days. In that sort of world where everything is so good, for me, Game of Thrones like sits above <laughs> everything. The the writing, the twists, the and I, I know it's all to do with George R. R. Martin and his writing, but the way the producers have taken on the story and made it into a TV show, and it's not an easy thing to do for that. Having read all the books. This should not translate to, t to television. This sh this book should not translate to TV. And the way that they have managed to cut out a lot of the, the I, I wouldn't call it fluff, because a lot of the stuff is worth having in the books, but they've cut a lot of the stuff out and streamlined it and still kept so much in and made it so, uh, the writing so good and the production so good. It's It blows my mind. So you're talking about the books there, the difference between the books and the TV show. I've never read the books, so is there a massive difference? Between well, yeah, there, there's a huge difference. I mean, a lot of the characters, that, um, like Caitlin Stark, is, well, big, big spoiler alert for anybody that's not read the books or um, is going to read the books. So if you're not if you're not read them, turn off now. But I think we're only on book five, so he's still not even written book six, by the way. Um which was season six. So, you know, in season six, um, you don't see Caitlin Stark, do you? No, you don't. She's... Or Kat Stark. Um, well, she's, she comes back um, to life in the books. Um, she's she's the one that um, runs the, um, you know, with those priests, that red priest. Yes. Um, has the hound, him and the hound, or the, oh, brother, yes. the brotherhood of whatever it is. Yes. She's the one that runs that. She's called Lady Stoneheart. She's been brought back to life. Oh, well, so, well, yeah, and and that's what we're waiting to read about, you knowing the next book and things like that. So, little things like that, and then big things like character deaths are probably a lot more drawn out. There's a lot more backstory into every single character. Um, certain characters don't make the show that have made the books, and vice versa. Some characters have been swapped around to fit the narrative of the show. And they weren't the ones that did certain things in the book, um, you know. So that that sort of stuff, it's it's quite interesting. Well, one thing when I, when you when you first suggested watching Game of Thrones to me, I I um I thought great, I know a TV show I'm gonna watch. <laughs> it's not easy, is it? How many more? Do, but by the end of the first episode, I wasn't totally sold. By the end of the first season, I was in. Well, um, well, good. <laughs> That's all I can I'm, say. I wouldn't say I'm a bigger fan this year, but I can enjoy enjoy the writing, the stories, and the characters. So. Well, I love it so much that I start work at 10 o'clock every Monday, and it gets released every Monday over here in the UK. Um, So I love it so much that we'll, me and Lindsay will get up before work, Go to McDonald's, get a McDonald's breakfast, bring it back, and watch it before work. And then I'll, I'll go to work because I, I can't go to work not knowing what's happening. See, you know that's not the case for me. I'll watch it whenever. And it irritates me. Oh, it drives me crazy, man. Oh, it's so annoying. Why can you not just watch it on my schedule? Because I want to talk to you about it, and then I can't talk to you about it because you've not bothered your ass to watch it. Something like this. It's getting me all, it's getting me all hot under the collar. No, but I can see why you put that in up. No. Yeah, maybe we'll just do uh, my top five and then we'll do your top five in another video. I'm just thinking yes, that. 
We could we could cut them make it two parts. Yeah, I'm not cutting anything, but we'll uh, <laughs> we'll stop after my top five, and then we'll uh, we'll go on to your top five after. Yeah, we have that well. Yeah, that took five minutes just to get through Game of Thrones. Yeah. <laughs> um, my second. Um, so that that's my favourite show of all of pretty much all time at the moment, and I watch it again and again and again. Um, my next show, and it probably won't come a surprise to you because we grew up together, but it might come as a surprise to a lot of people. Dragon Ball Z. Uh, that that becomes a no surprise to me, that. Yeah, I'm not talking about Dragon Ball Super, which is the show that's on the moment, and I'm watching it in Japanese, but this was a show that me and uh, our brother Graham used to watch pretty much every night. And this is a show where nothing can happen for 25 minutes, which is the entire duration of an episode, and yet you're still transfixed to the screen, or me, me and Graham were anyway, still like glued to the screen. Well, it just takes. I mean, it's it's just a Japanese anime, but it's I mean, it's popular over here. I mean, don't don't get me wrong; it's very very popular. It's probably one of the most popular Japanese animes going. But it, it a story arc seemed or used to when we were kids used to seem to take um, like months and months and months, and it still does now in Super, and not much happens. You might. You know somebody's power level. It's all about these guys that were um, they're sort of they're martial artists, and then people come from other planets trying to attack the Earth, and they have to defend the Earth through their martial arts and their superpowers and things like that. But and it sounds ridiculous on the on the on the face of it, but the way they increase in power over the different sagas and the the way the different characters evolve over over time, um, Goku being the main arc and his son Gohan being. Um, who was originally supposed to be the the main character over the course of the entire duration of the show, um, but because Goku was so popular in the in the third or fourth saga, they they kept it with him being the the main character. Well, that's what I was saying. As somebody that's only watched bits and pieces of the gun patterns and forwards past the TV when it's been on, mm. I've noticed those like different. I want to say, it, but I think they call it the sagas or something. Yeah, the other sagas, it's like series, but. So, if you had to pick one, what was your favorite saga? Um, oh, it's a tricky one. Probably the Cell Saga, and that's because Gohan suddenly, who's the who's his son, eclipses the powers of everyone else in the in the show. I mean, the three main characters would be Goku, Gohan, and um, Vegeta, who's a who originally starts off as trying to destroy the Earth. Um, but then joins their sort of um, band of merry men um, to save them because he marries one of the one of the earthlings in the show, and and that just shows the sort of develop character development over time of 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 the characters. But without dragging on, that's my second favorite episode. And I definitely definitely recommend that for for people. Um, my third um, show would be Frasier. Oh, interesting. Now, I know you love Frasier. You and I both grew up, grew up watching Frasier. I mean, we must have watched thousands and thousands of episodes. I even watched an episode today where they're in a... It was an early episode. It was on Channel 4. Um, where they're in a, a restaurant, a steak restaurant with their dad. Dinner for Eight, I think it was called. Yeah, it's so cool. Um, and the Frasier and Niles, who the two brothers, are so snobby um, that because they wanted to go take their dad to a like a fancy restaurant but they yeah. couldn't get in. So he took them to like a you know a working man's sort of restaurant or a steakhouse and um they got uh, you know all the fixings and uh oh. choose their steak from the side. It just showed how their their snobbiness um came out over their you know, from what their their dad's used to, he's like a proper working man, ex policeman. Yeah. And it's a good episode to show the quality and the range of acting from John Mahoney. Yes. Who plays uh, Martin Crane, the dad, and um, he's got like this little monologue about how he's embarrassed of his sons for being such snobs, and how their mother, even though she was quite well educated, still could enjoy a you know like a ball game and enjoy a steak and things like that. So that was just a good sort of mini episode to yeah, to because it, it, it's just a free uh, it's just a freedom. Yeah. Just in the restaurant. Those episodes with the best. You're right. And do you know what's so good about Frasier? It's a farce. Every episode's like a farce. Um, a bit like Modern Family. There's always some sort of something spiralling out of control. <laughs> a little bit. 
but <laughs> that's affecting Fraser's mental state, uh, even though he's a psychologist or a, or a psychiatrist. And um, but there's always some super grounding or one character that will ground the super writing, sorry, and one character that will sort of ground the show back into not just being a comedy, but it's almost like a um, drama comedy, some or dramedy sometimes. It's not always, but quite, quite a few of the episodes, as long as a message that the writers are trying to, um, to convey through the characters. To me, it was the first sort of dramedy. You know, every every show, every comedy show, like Orange is a New Black and all that, seemed to be sort of it's a mix of drama and comedy nowadays, and that's what grounds yeah. the characters. But this was like a pioneering show for me and that's why it's in my top five and it's been one of our favorites um growing up uh, definitely, definitely. And i know you love it ben what's your I thoughts think, on fraser I, I i just think it's great i think the characters are brilliant the, 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 especially the characters but i think john mahoney grabs the entire show because i'm always you would just have these two pretty same people yeah but what then you've got you've got the juxtaposition position of him to sort of bring the nether pig or two. No, you're right. And I know Fraser came from Cheers, but for me it's the superior show. To be honest with you, the character that he plays in Cheers is so different to the It is, yeah, it's a completely different character. They've just kept some of the characters like his ex wife and things yeah. in it. Um but yeah. And they do bring characters from Cheers in. Yes. Um every now and then. Um, so that's my third. And my fourth is a program that a lot of people probably don't know unless you're from the UK and, you know, you were around during the um, 70s and 80s or you're like me, you just enjoy classic British comedy and it's a, it's a show called Porridge. Oh. Um, do you remember Porridge, Ben? I do remember Porridge. So for those that don't know Porridge, Porridge is um, a, a program set in um, a prison and it's about all the characters, it's a comedy, a British comedy about all the, these characters in, in a prison. And the main characters are a, a character called Fletch, who's played by Ronnie Barker. And um, the other main character is called Godber, um, who's, I can't remember his name, but he's actually Kate Beckinsale's dad. Uh, Richard, uh, Beckinsale. Richard Beckinsale, yeah. So they're the two characters and it's about them sharing a cell and getting through prison life together while they're waiting to run down their um their respective prison sentences and for me the the uh, the, the writing's top quality ronnie barker is like a national institution in in the uk yeah um, as one part of the two ronnies um with ronnie corbett but what people um forget about him is he, he was such a fantastic character actor he was also a fantastic writer as well he wrote a lot of scripts for the two ronnies but He's such a fantastic character actor, and he's the the heart and soul of of Porridge. And Porridge is a show, along with like another program called Open All Hours, which he's in, that I could watch over and over and over again. And it's not just them two. There's a class, the prison warden um, of all the prison wardens, Mr. Mackay and uh, Mr. Barraclough. Then Mr. Yeah. Mackay is a sort of military man, expert yeah. man, and he's just played to perfection he's just this rigid absolutely rigid prison warden that won't let them get away with anything but he, he does have a little bit over the course of the series over the course of the show you see that he starts to enjoy fletcher and gobber's company even though he, he deep down <laughs> has so much disdain for them yes um he almost comes to admire them doesn't he yeah the the ability to to keep going even though they're in that sort of environment and then you've got Mr. Barraclough, who's um, this sort of softer, much softer prison warden who just gets taken advantage of yes. by all the all the inmates. But he's he's like the heart and soul as well of, of the show. And then you got um, people, cameos from people like David Jason, yes, um, who plays an old man, even though he was yeah. in his like thirties or something like that. Yeah. Um, so you know they're 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 excellent. They're I totally agree with that. So that, that's my uh, that's my fourth show, and I'm getting a visit by the dogs. So we'll see how long this goes before I have to let let them out. Yeah, I have to pause for the cause, as uh, Steve Austin would say on his uh, on his um, podcast. So my uh, fifth show, and it's not going to be to everyone's tastes, and it's not like an amazing show, but it's a show that I can watch over and over and over again without getting bored. I could just keep rewatching the 
the shows. And for me, that's the sign of a, it must be one of my favorite shows or else I wouldn't keep going back to it. And it's the Big Bang Theory. Oh, interesting. Now, that, as I say, it's a show that I can just watch. I can fall asleep to knowing it's not the best written show. It's not got the best production. It's not the funniest show on TV by any means, but it's my, one of my favorite shows. And um, I'm, I've enjoyed, and we've, we've, we've just rewatched the pilot um, before I came in because we're going to do a future sort of review yeah. on the pilot. Um, but I just rewatched the pilot, and without going too much into it, the evolution of the characters over the course of what the eleven or twelve series that they're they're on now, um, it's not been massive. If I'm if I'm being <laughs> If I'm being honest, they kind of hit it on the head straight away in the the pilot, but there has been little tweaks and little yeah. changes to characters, and I suppose that's the the way of the the show. But yeah, it's just a show that you know set in an apartment building um, with four main characters or four main um, you know guys who are the sort of geeks, yeah. um, and they're kind of supported by their uh, supporting characters from who are now actually main characters of um the their three three girlfriends or wives like uh, penny bernadette and um and uh what's that what's that what's that name penny oh it's gone it's gone though. it's got it's can't be one of my favorite shows i can't even remember her name <laughs> uh whatever her name is but th them two are not um geeks but pen uh, them two are kind of geeky but penny isn't and um but it's just setting their lives and dealing with their genius and some of their genius and how they juxtaposed to the rest of society i suppose and i think I, I, just, I just quite enjoy it the writing did dip a little bit in about season nine or ten but i feel like it's improved again and gotten strong again for the newest season so i've, I've, I've been well, that's good news, i've not seen the new season well there you go you've got something to look forward to haven't you that's good news so that's my top five um any thoughts ben on the bell on your top five i'm disappointed as face always <laughs> That's pretty solid. I think I say you're disappointed. It's pretty crap. I want to just like open. I'm sure no. somebody will if uh, if they're if they're what if they're watching this thinking that's not my top five. <laughs> no can do. Well, there you go. So then the next video we're going to get into your top five as we discuss because I think we'll cut this off at about twenty odd minutes because yeah. I don't want it to to go too long. Um. So. If you, uh, if you like this video and you like hearing about my top five and you want to hear about Ben's top five, think about subscribing to the channel. Um, hit the like button if you did like the video. And um, if you want to find us on uh, Twitter, Ben, what can people find you on? At Ironside1982. And you can find me at James Allen Yo, and I'll put the, um, the little bit on the, on the screen so you can uh, see what it's written down as. And uh, come along and give us a <clears throat> come along and chat to us, and um, we'll see you in the next video.